Hi, I'm Drew Kleber with Minnetoy America Corporation. I'm here with Jeremy Banks, who's our National Data Management Sales Specialist. And today we're going to be talking about dynamic gauge interfacing in MeasureLink 9. So Jeremy, I understand that MeasureLink 9 came out recently, and mm -hmm. I was hoping that you could explain uh, a new feature that's beneficial to the software that maybe we didn't have in version 8. Right, so the new feature we're going to talk about today is Dynamic Gauge. Mm -hmm. uh, dynamic Gauge allows us to record readings from the gauge without actually taking them as a measurement value. Uh, so for example, if we wanted to find a sweet spot on a diameter and then record the measurement, we can do that. So let me show you how that works. That'd be great, thanks. So Drew, as you can see, I've configured MeasureLink up to collect dynamic data. I've also configured my multiplexer to send streaming data. Mm -hmm. uh, so to use it, I'm going to turn on the streaming function of the multiplexer, and then I'm going to stroke the indicator. As the indicator moves, you can see that the dynamic charts in MeasureLink now update. This is sending live data. When I get a measurement that I'm satisfied with, I can hit the space bar to actually collect the data. The gauge is still sending information, so I can, again, measure another part, and then I can hit spacebar to collect that part. It's not actually collecting these individual data points as it would have done in the older versions. It's actually allowing me to see the data dynamically before I take the measurement point. That is a very cool feature, and I'm super excited that we have it in MeasureLink 9, but I do have a question for you. Mm -hmm. So I noticed that as the indicator was moving, you picked an arbitrary point and you hit the spacebar. Is it possible, let's say I have a part on centers and I have my indicator in a stand and I always wanted to find maybe the highest point that the indicator reaches or maybe the lowest point, mm -hmm. do we have the ability to have it automatically hold uh, based off of a max or min value? Yeah, that's exactly right. So we can collect max, min, and TIR. Can you show me that as well? Yes, sir. Let me show you how that's set up. So Drew, I'm in Support Center. I'm in the Routine Library. I've selected the routine that I want to add dynamic data to. So I click on the Dynamic Data tab in the Properties window, and then I'm going to add a new data set. When I add the data set, I select the characteristics that I'm going to get dynamic data for. If I click on that characteristic, I can see my options are the actual measurement value, the minimum, the maximum, or max minus min, or TIR. So this allows me to pick which one of these settings that I want. So if you're using a bore gauge, or if you're trying to measure runout, these are some of the functions you would use. If I go back to the data set, I can also choose what my dynamic data reset function will be. Normally, I'm going to reset after data collection. What this means is uh, I will stop taking data when I press the space bar, and then the gauge will automatically reset. That's what's commonly used in fixture systems. Uh, but if you had a situation where while loading the part, you peaked out the gauge, you may want to do a manual reset. And you can do that with a reset after prompt. So this would allow you to reset the data just like hitting the start button on a TIR indicator. I love it. So that seems not only flexible to use, but very easy to implement. Mm -hmm. I do have one more question though. So as far as getting the data in, um, can I just take an indicator and an input tool and plug it in? Or what are the requirements for actually getting the data in through dynamic gauging? Okay, so the hardware requirements basically. Uh, any Digimatic gauge, uh, but it has to stream. And most okay. of our gauges don't stream. So we can use a, a Minitoyo multiplexer with the streaming function. And then of course it takes Digimatic input. So all of our hand tools, major instruments will uh, that have Digimatic will be able to stream. So I can also collect data from multiple channels. So this multiplexer has four ports. I can collect data from four Digimatic gauges all at the same time. Very cool. So Jeremy, if I wanted to find out more information on not only dynamic gauging, but other new features in MeasureLink 9, where could I go to get that information? Right, so for more information on MeasureLink 9, please visit MeasureLink.com, or we can link there from Meditayo.com. Very cool. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time as well. If you have suggestions for future tooltip videos, please feel free to leave those in the comments below. If you have additional questions, please feel free to give us a call at 888-MITSUTOYO or visit us online at www.mitsutoyo.com.